Hello everyone, welcome to astrobloke.co.uk and uh, from a rather grey and dreary UK I'm going to show you my budget observatory build. A year ago I started my astrophotography journey and used to just get my equipment uh, set up in my back garden on a tripod um, and every night when it was clear I'd set myself up which would take a good, a good sort of 20 to 30 minutes, got quicker as time went on and I would photograph from the back garden. I couldn't leave my equipment out because obviously weather can be a little bit unpredictable um, security wise and, and other reasons so I always wanted to build an observatory and I did have enough space for that um, and I looked at all the different options and there are many options so you've got uh, you know uh, you've got your domes that you can buy which are all pre-made pre um, you've got uh, sheds that you can buy that are pre-made but then you've got companies that come and build one or you can build a bespoke one when I started looking at all the different options uh, there was some really high prices and they were kind of you know sort of putting a bit of a cap on what I could and couldn't do. I've got a workshop that I was uh, using <coughs> running leads out through the door so I could sit in the warm um, which will work to, a, to an extent but not great so I thought no I want to build an observatory and I looked at different ideas and uh, I was on a thread on Stargazers Lounge where people had used the plastic key to shed and have made uh, uh, modifications to it to work for astrophotography. Um, I looked at this and I had a little think and I could see a lot of advantages with it. So I'm going to show you the shed now um, so you can see what it looks like. It went through a few stages and um, depending on your budget and your DIY ability you can go as far as you want really. Um, I've gone to a full roll off roof now and I think I'll actually go automated eventually with a roll off roof but that hasn't happened yet so we'll, um, we'll get to that maybe another time but there were some great advantages with the Keter shed uh, being plastic uh, it's not going to rot it's not going to require painting maintenance is very low the worst I might have to do is maybe give it a jet wash off it's easy to work with it's light one person can erect it although it's a bit fiddly helps if you've got a second person to help you with some of the panels doesn't require a massive concrete base because there's no rotting going on because it's all plastic so that was another thing I was looking at wooden ones <clears throat> they either required an air gap underneath so a framework to be put down or a concrete base don't need that um, it, it wasn't overly expensive the shed actually cost me 450 pounds delivered um, I think they're about 500 I see they range there's ranges on prices so shop around because you can get some bargains on it I went by for the six foot by six foot bear in mind that's the internal measurement externally it's slightly bigger um, I know some people have laid concrete bases six foot by six foot for their shed and then realize it's actually a bit bigger than that so don't make that mistake wait until you've got the base and then you know exactly the footprint you need um, anyway I'm going to show you around the uh, observatory now and I'll try and point out things that I did, little problems that I may have come across and what I did to get over it. But I'm going to go through the stages of how I've used the shed because I did start off just by putting a tripod in it. I then wanted to build a pier and I've slowly added to it as time's gone on to make it uh, work better and just be more comfortable. So here's the shed. Um, I haven't actually given it a name yet um, and I'd like to um, so maybe you can help me come up with one or pick one uh, put it in the comments give me some ideas and suggestions try and be kind if you can um, a really good advantage of the plastic shed is it's really well weather sealed so we don't get any water in whatsoever also as mentioned before there's no concrete base this is just sitting on a plastic grid uh, system 
with some 10mm gravel to give it some extra support. The roof rolls off onto a framework. You don't actually need to go even as thick as the wood I've used. I've used some fence post uprights. Um, the posts and the post feet, which are just spiked into the ground, all the screws and a little bit of stain and everything else that I use, I think I spent in total around £100 on the frame. Um, and it runs all the way into the shed, which you'll see in the video later. Um, but you don't need to go over the top with that because, as I say, the roof is extremely light. What we'll do now is uh, roll the roof off and uh, show you that in operation and then show you the inside of the build. Show you how easy it is to uh, open it up. Okay, I've got some stops at the uh, end of the runners here so that it doesn't run off the edge which uh, they're magnets actually so they actually they hold it they hold it very gently but that's with the roof off as I told you before it's extremely light and with just one hand I can lift the roof up completely and back down again so there's no weight to the roof so this structure doesn't have to actually be over the top so um, you can build what you like anyway this is the inside of the observatory and there's my pier which I've got a video uh, on the build of the pier and the budget which costs £155 I'll put a link at the end of this video so that you can uh, watch that video if you want to uh, see how I built my pier the, construct the shed and the construction of what I did for the observatory cost me um, just under £800 in total. I've added a lot to the uh, observatory over time with insulation and heat etc. Um, you can go as uh, little and as far as you want. So um, when I first uh, built the shed I literally just put it on the ground um, and with the roof I'll show you with the construction of it. It's just two plastic leaves that slot into a central bar here and it's screwed around the whole of the, the this structure. So what I did was I made sure there was some extra screws to hold the leaves into this central part here and I noticed that when I, I, I could literally, this part of the roof just lifted off it was really easy and it's so light without even the surround on it anyway you know it's not difficult at all and I used to just lift it off but it was flapping around a bit so what I got was some copper pipe just flattened it at the ends bent it over screwed it through and I've just got some bolts that go through the roof to the top uh, where I've got a big washer and a nut and I used some silicon to make sure it was watertight and these not only helped me with lifting it off but they also held the roof into its shape so it was easy to get back on, lift off, get back on, no problems at all. I always wanted to do a roll off roof, I'll go to that in a second, but what you could do is what I did, which um, was just to have a tripod in the middle of the observatory set up permanently, polar aligned, and I used to just lift the roof on and off, ran an extension lead in, and it all worked really well. Now I had a laptop on a little table in the chair, and used to just do my observatory that uh, my observing that way. The next stage that I uh, went through was to uh, add some power to the um, area, and I also built my pier. So I took the shed all down, bought the base for the shed because it didn't have a base originally. It was just sitting on the ground on the on the bare ground on just a weed suppression sheet weed suppressant sheet it's like a tongue twister um, and I built my pier and then rebuilt the shed around it made sure I cut a hole so that the pier wasn't in contact with the floor at all put the shed back on and 
then I had a, a much more permanent solution. So one thing to bear in mind when you're taking the roof on and off, especially when you take the main part of the, this, this, this surround off, is that that's a big part of the structure. And so what you need to get hold of is some of this, which is like a, a builder's bar. Um, I got this just from uh, a local uh, B&Q. Just uh, screwed in, nice and tight, and it just basically supports all of the, I've got one up the top there, one on the other side here, and it basically just pulls it all together and keeps it tight. On the roof side, to keep this uh, nice and uh, square, or as square as possible, I've got some corner brackets, one in each corner, screwed in, and it just gives it a bit of rigidity so it doesn't, when you're moving it about, it's not twisting too much and flexing. So once um, I decided I was going for the rolling roof, I had to look at the different systems. Um, there's some expensive uh, companies out there. Um, I went for um, a rail, I looked at uh, wardrobe rails. I looked at um, security gate rails, which seemed the best one because they come galvanized and so they're built for the outside weather. The things I had to do was I had to go around the top of the uh, original shed and cut it to a level. Um, you've got these uh, nubs that stick up that go into the little holes in here on, on the uh, roof. So they had to be cut off anyway. I cut everything down to the roof to a level so that the roof will clear the observatory. Now what that does leave you with is a gap and weather can get in that gap. So what I did was, um, and I went on Amazon and they sold these rolls of uh, rubber neoprene. Um, and they do it in different thicknesses. Um, so I went for this, I think it was 75 mil. And basically it's uh, got silicon gluing it all the way to the edge of the uh, roof and uh, I've screwed it in as well with some washers just to give it some extra security and this basically stops any wet and weather getting in. I've got this all the way around and it works really well. I mean, uh, it's, it's absolutely ideal. As I say, once the roof's on, it's nice and secure. I can uh, lock it down. I've had some gale force winds. Um, that was a good test to see whether the roof was going to stay on and uh, it doesn't have any problems at all. It stays on lovely, completely watertight. I never get any water in, um, and it's been a fantastic thing to build. It's really enhanced my hobby. Okay, so just jumped on the internet to um, share a couple of links, maybe where I bought things or where you can buy things. So this is the shed that I used, which is the uh, Kita Factor Apex Garden Shed. Uh, six by six, as I say, the base is a little bit bigger than uh, six by six, so be aware of that uh, when you're working out where it's going to go or what sort of base you're going to put down for it. Um, Argos have got it for £500, there's a used one at the moment on eBay for £205. Um, as I say, some places they charge us, you know, get, getting up towards a thousand pounds for this shed, which is ridiculous. As I shop around, this is about the average price I've seen. I was lucky I managed to pick one up for 450 um, The base, this I got off eBay, uh, 8x6 I went for, um, It's uh, it, it all clicks together, It's uh, not make sure the ground's nice and flat, it came with a roll of uh, weed suppressant as well, which I laid down, this went on top, and then I bought some 10 mil gravel bags uh, from just uh, B&Q. Uh, and filled them. I didn't fill all of them, I just filled uh, around the outside just so it gave a nice solid firm base for the uh, shed to sit on. But uh, yep, yeah, they were really good. Um, next, this is the company, well I went on eBay, um, I shopped around a lot for the, the rail. Um, it was very difficult to um, get a good uh, deal on this. Um, some companies were charging ridiculous amounts of money these are £24.31 for um, a three metre long length. They gave a slight discount for buying more. Um, and uh, yep, absolutely, absolutely perfect for the job. Galvanised as well, so you know it's going to last in the uh, weather. And, um, and they're actually very heavy gauge. They're made for security gates, sliding gates. 
so um, the roof that comes with the Keter shed is so light it's not going to put any wear and tear on this hardly at all um, next the wheels I went for now these can work out expensive as well um, these ones they're the V type uh, the V groove type they're 31 millimeters they came from China um, I actually bought eight um, and only used six in the end again with the very light roof you don't need many of these uh, six three on each side was more than enough um, and I've seen some people with uh, wooden uh, um, sheds with the roll-off roof they've got you know sort of like 10 wheels on each side so that could actually up the price quite a lot again shop around because um, these these were very cheap at three pounds odd each um, but I've seen these you know a, a pair at 60 pounds and I'll you know it, it can make your jaw drop so uh, do look around and um, as I said on the video I cut the top of the shed down there to be a gap for the rolling roof to clear the shed sides and I used this from uh, Amazon I ordered it. it was 28 pounds for 10 meter length um, and it comes in all different um, uh, widths and I went for 75 millimeters um, which I cut down at the front for the doors to clear um, but kept it at the full 75 millimeters which gave a really nice overlap and uh, weather seals the uh, the observatory perfectly thanks very much for watching the video I do hope it's been of some help to some of you if you do have any questions whatsoever please leave a comment in the comment section below and I will answer them I um, also have a, a peer build video which will appear at the end of this video there will be a link there for you to go to so you can watch that also if that's something you're interested in doing and again any questions please just put them in the comments section I haven't named my observatory yet so any help would be greatly appreciated um, again just leave a comment try and be nice if you can that would be uh, greatly appreciated um, so this is uh, the end of the video if you do like it give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and uh, I'll keep making as much content as I can I'm hoping to do some PixInsight tutorials as I've been learning that program recently um, and hopefully that can help out. It is due to be clear this evening but the app state keeps changing its mind so maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it isn't I might even uh, do a little stream of uh, my imaging tonight. Thanks ever so much for watching, take care and I wish you all clear skies.